So with the user interface built, we're going to give our stopwatch a bit of functionality. And to do that, we're going to use a model which I have already coded earlier. So a model is a structure of data that we can call upon that will contain all the functions and information required in order for our stopwatch to work. So the model is downloaded into my finder, which I've got here on the right. And to add it into my project, I'm just going to click and drag it into the project. And I'm certainly going to copy the item if needed. That way, if I happen to delete it out of this folder, there is a copy of the model inside the project or inside the stopwatch folder for this project um, that will be able to be used. All right, so we'll just push that out the road. And just resume that just to make sure that it's picked up the hook model. Okay, so into the top of the application in the brain, we're going to call upon the clock model. And the name of the um, model or the um, class is called clock. So I'm going to start with at observed object var clock equals a clock, which is the object that is inside of our clock model. So as you can see in the model, there's a heap of code which I've created and it's going to be used as we call it from the clock variable. So this clock variable is an observed object. That's exactly the same as a state variable that we've done before. And the only difference is the fact that we have made a custom class and therefore have to use observed object rather than state. So the first thing I change is the text no longer going to be 0000. zero, zero, zero. Uh, we're going to put clock dot and we're going to have the stopwatch display which is a variable inside of the model which is actually still going to be 0000. zero, zero, zero. Ooh, we even got the hundredth on the side so I might want to bring down this font there we go And inside of our HStack on each of our buttons, we're going to give them a gesture. So when you create a button using the button object, it's in built a tap gesture, it's expecting one. So when you go between the squiggly brackets of a button, you put in the code that will run when you tap on it. For a custom button such as this, I need to use dot on tap gesture and it's giving me the squiggly brackets automated with a placeholder of code saying, I really need code that goes into here for this button or for this gesture to run when the button is tapped. So the code will be self.clock.start stopwatch. There it is there. You can see there's other functions that are inside of this, but we're using a stopwatch for this application. Next, the stop button dot on tap gesture. Again, I'm just going to hit enter to get the automated code built for me. Self dot clock dot. And in this case, I've actually set it that the stopwatch running, there it is there. That's a bool, which is a true or false. And when I start the stopwatch, it actually sets that to true. Now, if I want to stop the stopwatch, the stopwatch running is going to have to become false. It is no longer running and it will stop the stopwatch. If I play that, it'll rebuild. And away it goes. <laughs> 